We have reached the end of another turbulent Premier League season. We saw Jurgen Klopp manage his last ever Liverpool game. Man City won their fourth league title in a row to the shock of absolutely no one. Sorry, Arsenal fans. I know your pain all too well. And of course, we saw three sides relegated down to the championship. And for only the second time in Premier League history, all three sides who were promoted the season before were sent crashing right back down to the league below, with Sheffield United, Burnley and Luton not getting an enough points to maintain their Premier League status and making way for three new sides looking to make a name for themselves in the elite competition of England. Leicester and Ipswich have already booked their promotion spot and this Sunday last season's relegated sides Leeds and Southampton will meet in the EFL Championship playoff final to decide who the last promoted team will be. Both of these teams have established themselves as successful Premier League outfits in the past and it got me thinking about who the best promoted the teams ever were and what the best debut Premier League campaigns were from those teams. Welcome to Good Sport Reviews. My name is Lewis and here is my list for the top 10 best post-promotion Premier League seasons. And if you want to be promoted in our estimations around here, please make sure to hit like and subscribe. It helps out the channel massively and will help us reach 500 before the end of next month, which would be amazing. So yeah, make sure you do it. Number 10, Sheffield United, 2019-2020. Making a top 10 best list and including Sheffield United on it seems like a crazy concept given they went down this season quicker than the Hindenburg. But in the 1920 season, during their first Premier League campaign since 2007, Sheffield United were actually in a very good place, having been promoted from the championship in second place and making real progress under Chris Wilder during his first stint at the club. And their top flight campaign was no different, with the side tip for relegation at the bottom of the league actually finishing the campaign in ninth place with a highly respectable 54 points. This, this season saw some real innovation from the Blades, with the side playing mainly in a 5-3-2 formation and using overlapping centre-backs to play some attractive football that actually brought victories over the likes of Arsenal, Tottenham and even Chelsea during this impressive stint. And using the summer transfer window, they brought in shrewd signings like Dean Henderson on loan from Manchester United, Sander Berg, who would go on to become one of their best players that season and Ollie McBurney who would end the campaign at the club's top goal scorer with seven Premier League goals to propel the side to within two points of Europa League qualification on their first time of asking. The less said about the following season the better with Sheffield getting slapped around like Tyson Fury against Alexander Jusic but this year will go down as one of the greatest in the history of the club. Number 9, West Ham 2005-2006. Alan Pardew has about as much managerial ability as a tree trunk nowadays, but back in 2005 he was actually a well-respected coach and during his time at West Ham United he showed off some sort of form of tactical ability when he led the Irons to Premier League promotion through the playoffs and an eventual ninth place finish with an impressive 55 points. The season started off like a dream with the London side picking up 11 points from their first six matches, propelling them into fourth place at the the end of October, including victories over Blackburn, Aston Villa and Fulham. However, you can't spell Alan Pardew without bad form and the side went on a poor run of results which saw them lose six matches in nine between November and January and ended up fighting for a finish in the top half. Despite the season being more up and down than a drunk on a trampoline, they did pick up memorable victories over Tottenham, Everton and Arsenal which had Arsene Wenger trying to take the head off of Alan Pardew like he was used to punching Tyson Fury. I know I've mentioned the fight already but it needs repeating. Accept the defeat, Tyson Fury, and move on. Don't be blaming war in Ukraine for your defeat. They also reached the final of the FA Cup for the first time since 1980, losing to Liverpool on penalties, and signed effective players like Yossi Ben Ayoun, club legend James Collins, and the definition of evil himself, Paul Koncheski, the man who keeps creeping up in these list videos and reminds me why alcohol exists. Number 8, Reading 2006-2007. It's hard to believe that the side that finished this season 17th in League One were once finishing 8th in the Premier League with Kevin Doyle scoring 13 goals and picking up points against the likes of Manchester United, Chelsea and pre-takeover Manchester City because before money was a thing they struggled to beat sides like Reading and Middlesbrough, simple times before corruption existed. 
Anyway, Reading picked up 55 points and ended with a positive goal difference, unlike West Ham the season before, as well as narrowly missing out on European football by only one point. But despite this, the 8th place finish in the 06-07 campaign remains the side's highest ever Premier League finish, and manager Steve Koppel did a superb job of keeping the momentum going following their first place finish in the Championship the season before. And thanks to effective signings like Kevin Doyle and Shane Long from Cork City, as well as Leroy Lita for only one million pounds they surpassed all expectations and gave the fans a season to remember the less said about the following campaign where they finished 18th and were sent crashing back down to the championship the better but this season will be remembered fondly by fans of reading forever Number 7, Wolves 2018-2019. Wolves feel like they've been in the Premier League forever, but actually the side were relegated back in 2012 and didn't return to the top flight for six years. But when they came back up, they made history and produced one of the best promotion campaigns in the Premier League era. Their first season back, they finished on an incredible 57 points and ended their season in 7th place, following fantastic seasons from the likes of Ruben Neves, Conor Coady, Diego Jota, Rui Patricio, the list goes on. This was a doubt, a doubt, one of the best teams to ever come up from the championship and this season produced some fantastic moments for the club, including a six game unbeaten run with matches against Manchester United and Manchester City amongst those six, victories over Arsenal and Chelsea. They also reached the semi-finals of the FA Cup and qualified for European football after Man City won the FA Cup that season. Oh, the joys. This seventh place finish was the club's highest in 38 years and the best campaign by a newly promoted club in 18 years. This season established Nuno Espirito Santos as a top level manager and showed off the capability of the club's new ownership with great signings like Adama Traore and João Moutinho propelling the club from newly promoted whipping boys to Premier League ever stays. Number 6, Sunderland 1999-2000. This entry could just be called Kevin Phillips full stop. I once did a video called the worst ever relegated teams and the Sunderland side of 0203 was one of the highest on this list. So it's incredible to me how just three years before the club were competing for a European place and ended up finishing this campaign in seventh, only missing out on a European spot by goal difference. The Black Cats had a superb time back in the top flight following promotion the season before and went on a five game winning streak between September and October, including victories over Aston Villa, Leicester City and Sheffield Wednesday and stole the show on many occasions against the big sides. However, one man stood out amongst the rest and Kevin Phillips ended the campaign scoring 30 league goals and won not only the Premier League Golden Boot, but he was the first Englishman to win the European Golden Shoe. This was a remarkable season for the Sunderland legend and it is without a doubt one of the best first seasons back in the Premier League. The side lost players like Michael Bridges and Lee Clark, but they recruited intelligently and gave the fans a campaign to remember. They couldn't quite get over the line with Aston Villa clinching the last European place, but this will still be remembered by all Premier League fans, not only Sunderland loyals. Number five, Leeds 2020-2021. We may well see Leeds back in the top flight within the next week, should they pick up a victory in the playoff final against Southampton. But it's hard to imagine that they will have a better first season back than they did in 2020, when they return with a bang under the guidance of Marcelo Bielsa, the madman who inspired the likes of Pep Guardiola, so much so that Pep himself once traveled over 3,000 miles to meet the man himself become Leeds manager in 2018 and failed, failed to reach the Premier League in that season after falling to Frank Lampard's Derby County in the playoff semi-finals. With that in mind, some fans thought that when Leeds did eventually gain promotion into the promised land that they would be fodder for relegation and sent back down as quick as they came up. Alas, this was not the case and Leeds had a successful first season finishing ninth in the league with 59 points and played some of the most intense full throttle football in the league. As is the story for a lot of these sides, they just missed out on European qualification but gained victories over the likes of Aston Villa, Manchester City and went on a four game winning streak in the final stretch of the season with Patrick Bamford scoring an incredible 17 league goals that season. It's not quite Kevin Phillips but no one man is, he's Harlem from the past like, I'm, like a Terminator I'm convinced. But it was enough for them to stamp their position in the league and it was a terrific debut season back after not featuring in England's top division since 2004. 
Number four, Blackburn Rovers, 1992-1993. This season set the foundations for Blackburn's eventual title win just two years later, and the club looked as though they could take on anyone in their first campaign back in the Premier League since 1966. And with the signings of a young Alan Shearer from Southampton and King Kenny as the manager, it felt like the sky was the limit for the Riversiders, who that same season reached the quarterfinals of the FA Cup and the semi-finals of the League Cup, losing going to Sheffield Wednesday 4-2. The season had many highs, including victories over Arsenal and Liverpool. Players like Mike Newell, Tim Sherwood and previously mentioned Alan Shearer were playing out of their skins, and the side felt as though this was a season of success, with the team ending up in fourth place and amassing an unbelievable 71 points. Yes, this was over a 42 game season and would amount to around 64 points in a 38 game season, but it is still spectacular for a side who gained promotion to stick with the big boys of the time and fight for European positions. And the fact that the season was four games longer, in a way, makes it more remarkable. This Blackburn side goes down in Premier League history for winning the league, but the work they did to establish a basis for that title winning campaign was just as important. Number three, Ipswich Town, 2000-2001. They are back in the Premier League next season, and I want to be the first to congratulate Ipswich Town for winning three points at the Tottenham Hotspur Stadium, because we all know that's going to happen. Sorry, Spurs fans. Back in 2000-2001, Ipswich, like others on this list, were tipped for immediate relegation following their promotion from the Championship, and it was probably with good reason with the side having amazing players like Amir Karic, and Keith Brannigan in their team. Ooh. However, Premier League fans were stunned when the track the boys, great nickname by the way, kept winning game after game. They beat Leeds, who at this point were fighting the top four. They beat Liverpool, who were just about to thrive under Gerard Houllier. And between the 17th of March and 19th of May, they only lost one in nine matches, stamping their authority in the league and finishing the debut campaign fifth, only four points behind Arsenal and narrowly missing out on Champions League qualification in the process. They were the best side to be promoted from the playoffs and asserted themselves as a great team to watch and that they weren't going to be everyone's punching bag. Their top scorer in the league that season was Marcus Stewart with 19, the man who would score 17 goals in his last season at Sunderland as well, actually. And they will have a tough time replicating this league position next season and might well replicate the 2001-2002 season where they were relegated in 18th place. But again, well done for the upcoming win over Tottenham. And maybe Man United, we just don't know. Number two, Nottingham Forest, 1994-1995. When you have Stan Collymore in your team, anything is possible. Just ask Newcastle fans, they know exactly what I'm talking about. And in 1994, Nottingham Forest had the same feeling with the Liverpool icon scoring an impressive 22 league goals in their roller coaster of the season. See, this was the post Brian Clough era, and despite this tough time, Forest were thriving, finishing third in the league and at one point were actually in a title race, never falling out of the top six all season. And despite them going on a poor run of form, which saw them win just five in 20 matches, they managed to get it together towards the end of the season, going on a nine game unbeaten run in the final 12 matches and finished only 12 points behind eventual champions Blackburn Rovers. Because Blackburn's achievement was so huge, fans often forget about this incredible feat from Frank Clark's side and they deserve more respect. They went unbeaten in their first 11 league matches, which for a side who were newly promoted borders on Doctor Who levels of Alien, and they ended the league season with 77 points, albeit in a 42 game season, which would amount now to around 70 points, but that's still incredible. To put that into perspective, this season, Aston Villa, who have had the season of their lives, ended the campaign on 68 points, too short of the Nottingham Forest total from 94-95. This was fantastic from the side with one of the most memorable league seasons ever and one of the worst league kits ever seen also. And number one, Newcastle United, 1993-1994. It was the easiest entry on this list by far. Newcastle United's first season back in the Premier League lives in history as one of the best debut campaigns ever in the league. After finishing first in Division 1 the season before, there weren't many people who believed the Toon Army could keep the momentum up and develop even further. But upstepped Andy Cole who said, no, no, 
that and proceeded to treat the league like a cat with a dead bird. 34 league goals is what Cole scored and this side gained the nickname the Entertainers as they went on to score 82 goals and ended the campaign with a positive goal difference of 41. It's remarkable just how explosive they were after gaining promotion to the league and it is still a benchmark for newly promoted sides to try and reach. They were right in the title races and clever signings like Peter Beardsley, Darren Peacock and Malcolm Allen who scored 7 in 12 matches by the way before a serious ankle injury showed that they were a side to be reckoned with following their promotion. The next season they finished 6th but they had some of the most remarkable players who were still remembered in the league today and this season they ended with 77 points, 70 in a 38 game season and it was their highest total since they won the league title in 1927. It's a truly remarkable achievement and it is without a doubt the best campaign from a newly promoted side. And that's our list. If you are new around here, please make sure to hit like and subscribe. I want to get to 500 by the end of next month, so let's see if we can make that happen. Thank you very much for watching, and I will see you all in the next video.